people know Tai Chi Chuan as a slow, gentle, and graceful dance, it's only natural to assume that its famous health benefits arise from its meditative nature. But history tells another story. It is a story of a marriage made by mutual convenience, and it is a story of a union of parties as different from one another as the Capulets and the Montagues. It's actually more than a marriage story. It's a blending of two clans in a union that took centuries to consummate. On the one hand, you had the martial arts practiced in China for more than 5,000 years. The training was fierce, the standards superhuman, and the intention was to destroy the enemy. Truly martial, much of the practice was bitterly difficult and focused single-mindedly on weapons and warfare. We witnessed the arrival of the second clan, Qigong, a legion of people practicing slow movement, animalistic postures, and constant attention to respiration. As a general rule, these were not inherently friendly clans. They were very different. Martial arts might be drilled in a military environment, but Qigong and such practices often sat in the shadows of temples and monasteries. Martial training was rigorous enough to be life-threatening. Besides the bruises, sprains, breaks, and pains, there were also many deaths. It became obvious that this young type training needed a yin complement. Qigong seemed to be the answer. A simple system emerged, hard martial practice to strengthen and condition, offset by a session of Qigong to relax, recuperate, and rejuvenate. As the masters refined their arts, they desired to bring martial arts and Qigong closer together, so they developed a practice where you would stand still, which was Qigong, then suddenly move with blinding speed of martial art, only to resume your stationary Qigong posture as still as a mountain. The appropriate name for this internal art was form of the mind boxing. This method of alternating states was a breakthrough in martial history. Eventually the clan boundaries disappeared. Somewhere around four centuries ago, a key martial union gave birth to a brilliant concept. This required an examination of all basic martial movements, throwing out such extreme actions as aerial kicks, rolling attacks, and overly tensed strikes. What remained, actually a great deal, were movements which could be practiced as martial and Qigong simultaneously. The consummation of this was Tai Chi, actually the full name is Tai Chi Chuan, or Yin Yang Boxing. As you can see in the image here, where the two circles of Qigong and martial arts overlap, Tai Chi Chuan occupies the mutual area. This drawing implies that Tai Chi Chuan brought in some concepts that are purely Qigong. There are other similar styles, but Tai Chi Juan is the first family of this approach. Over the centuries, Qigong has gained a sense of structure and purpose, a great aid to martial arts practice and vice versa. The blending of Qigong and martial emphasizes not fighting, but its core principle and values is to cultivate intentional integrity and heroic physics. That is the reason that the Chinese consider Tai Chi Juan to be a cultural treasure of a high order and a study in balance and harmony.